Okay, folks, um, thank you for being here on time. I will start so that uh, we respect uh, the next speaker's time. Uh, my name is Asaf Bautov. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation, and I'm here to report about an ongoing project called the Africa Growth Pilot, uh, which focuses on a new approach to growing the community in uh, Africa, specifically Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm going to present the approach and also what we've learned so far. So I've presented this approach at Wikimania already, but now uh, we actually have uh, gone through the live teaching portion of the program. So I have a few new slides with what we've learned. So what is this? Uh, it is an experiment. We are not sure this new approach works, but we are experimenting with a new approach because we are fairly sure that uh, the old approach isn't working great. We're not happy with the state of uh, growth in the community in Africa. We don't think it's as effective as it could be, and we're looking for ways to make it more effective. So. This tries a new approach uh, that we believe can make a big difference on the retention. Can we get the slides to match here? On the retention uh, of editors in Sub-Saharan Africa, the belief rests on a few observations that I'm going to detail now. And if we uh, are able to validate this uh, hypothesis, this uh, new idea, we hope to A, scale it up and offer additional modules and offer it in additional languages, uh, but also um, to see it affect the way we invest in communities in Africa. So if this hypothesis is proved correct or successful, we expect it will change what gets funded uh, in Africa. <clears throat> so, what do we know that led us to uh, start experimenting? We know that Africa has the youngest population in the world. We know it is increasing, it is growing, connectivity is growing in Africa. You know all this. But we also know that the share of African editors among the total uh, editor and community um, on Earth is a lot smaller than... Uh, the proportion of Africans among uh, the world population. And um, we also know that the I mean, only 1% of the total editors are from Africa, whereas the share of global population is 15%. And even the share of connected to the internet population is 7%. So Africans are under participating in uh, Wikipedia um, at that proportion. We also know that there's a lot of programmatic outreach, uh, editing workshops, other uh, events where you try to recruit new editors that are um, conducted by people who don't have everything they need to conduct the training or the workshop effectively. We have observed trainings being given by people who themselves don't have sufficient grasp of, of core policies or of uh, topics that new editors are likely to encounter, people who don't quite understand the notability policy or copyright law or how templates work or all kinds of other things that are expected, not of every Wikipedian maybe, but certainly an IP with someone. That's confusing and difficult for a newbie to even understand. Um, the people who deliver the training, is there anything we can do about the slides here? Thank you. Uh, yeah, and uh, the culture. Uh, people who give trainings should be able to teach newbies the principles of the wiki and the culture of the wiki. The fact that, for example, yes, some people are going to be pseudonymous. You won't know who they are, and they will not jump on a WhatsApp with you. You will have to engage with them on Wiki without knowing who they are or seeing their face. This is upsetting to some people, 
And when you come and train people, you need to help them deal with that and be prepared for that. That's one of the main causes of friction for newbies, uh, especially if they expect interaction to happen in a more personal way. It doesn't happen that way on Wiki. So we know that all of this is leading to frustrated organizers and frustrated movies and to lower retention rates than they otherwise might have been. We also received feedback from programs like Let's Connect, where people were giving very positive feedback on the trainings that were offered as part of Let's Connect. Trainings on things like Wikidata and event organizing and things like that. But people were saying more basic training on on wiki skills and principles were needed. So that's one thing that we knew uh, alongside with the demographics that I mentioned, which led us to form an ambitious goal statement, an ambitious uh, desire for uh, change, which is to double the amount of active editors in Africa by 2030. Right now, we have about 2,500 active Wikipedia editors across the entire continent of Africa, about 2,500. And we want to double that uh, within uh, just over six years. Um, this is quite ambitious because if you think about it, the 2,500 that we have are what we have accumulated over the years. And now we want to double that amount. And also, by definition, the 2,500 editors we already have are the easier ones to recruit. We have recruited them. Uh, the ones that we are yet to recruit are more challenging. So it's a very ambitious goal. And the way we want to reach it is through addressing what we think are two causes of uh, less effective uh, recruitment. And those are the lack of high quality and up-to-date audiovisual training materials on the core policies. Uh, in most communities, people have developed whatever works for them, slides, workshop uh, plan, or whatever, that allows them to do effective training. Uh, and so we at the foundation have not really been in the business of producing training materials on things like neutral point of view or notability. But we have found that such materials are needed and are not being developed effectively by communities in Africa. And uh, we think that um, the, the available modules that do exist are either out of date or, or poor quality or uh, incomplete. And we think that they are actually uh, a potentially an obstacle because people might use them uncritically and then be themselves misleading the people that they teach. And so um, we're addressing that status quo. And we're addressing the fact that a lot of people are involved in the community and do edit, but their platform knowledge plateaus early. They stop learning and they never uh, become more adept, more skilled in the platform beyond some basic level that they then maintain sometimes for years. So we, we see people involved in Africa who at two or three or four years into the movement don't know much more in terms of the platform than they knew when they were six months into the movement. That's what I mean by plateauing, not continuing to deepen the familiarity. And we also look critically at ourselves and our own practice, and we see that um, our own eagerness to see more work happen in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we have been very enthusiastic to fund and enable work happening in Sub-Saharan Africa has uh, led us to invest in those who showed up, whoever was in Sub-Saharan Africa, ready to do some work, we were ready to fund it. Um, and that led to um, some unsuccessful or low impact work. Also led to some successful and great work uh, but I'm focusing here on what doesn't work for us. We suggest that um, we should have been more critical about who we resource and who we fund and make sure that there is that nucleus of self-motivated interest and passion for volunteering um, before we uh, enable them with resources. So instead of just funding whoever shows up, we should seek out the self-motivated editors and invest 
only in their uh, development and programmatic work. Um, so we believe that if we were to change our approach in this way and, and be more critical about who we invest in rather than whoever shows up, we will create a more skilled volunteer base in Africa and we will thereby improve the uh, uh, efficiency of programmatic work in Africa, including creating a larger pool of potential movement leaders. Because we often also observe that there's too little participation from Africa in global governance, global committees, the board of trustees, etc. So this is also a long-term investment in creating a pool from which we will be able to eventually recruit movement leaders. So what is the solution we propose? It is a big funnel approach, a term borrowed from marketing, a big funnel approach. A funnel is you know, the, the thing that you use to pour liquid into a narrow opening, uh, just in case the word isn't familiar. And this is what it looks like. The funnel is on its side. I know you cannot read the text on the slide. I'm going to walk you through it. But broadly, the big funnel approach means we create a well-resourced induction funnel for editors from Sub-Saharan Africa, where the end of the funnel, where people enter the process, is zero investment. It costs us zero dollars to put someone into the funnel after some initial investment in creating the, the entrance to the funnel. The idea is that only after a certain um, person shows that they have that motivation, that self-motivation that we want, and they have gone through the first step of the funnel, which is self-paced, unsupervised learning, only the few, relatively few, who would go through that and still be interested without the promise of travel or a laptop or a t-shirt or anything, just here's the training, are you interested, do you want to do this, are you interested in more? The few people who are interested, those are the people we will invest in. Those are the people we will then invite to events, to further training, to leadership training, to uh, scholarship opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Those are the, the following steps of the funnel, and I'm going to zoom in um, and show them to you. But the, again, the idea is that once you have that funnel, you can drive a large amount of people into the funnel and let the funnel, let this uh, the, the self-paced string modules be the selector, essentially. Some people will uh, lose interest, will find it too hard or too abstract or too boring or too whatever, and that's okay. Let us remind ourselves that editing for free knowledge is a bit of a strange hobby. It's not for everyone. Not everybody enjoys it. That's okay. We need to find the people who do enjoy it. We don't need to insist on any one person that they really have to start editing. Instead, we have to reach as many people as possible so that we find the relatively few people who are interested, who do find it rewarding for its own sake. And so um, stage one, we literally get people to understand, to know that this exists, that there exists a training program, free online training program for how to get involved with Wikimedia, not just Wikipedia, Wikimedia, including the CISPA projects, including other things beyond the writing articles. Because another thing we know is that writing articles is not for everyone, but there's a lot of, lots of people who would love taking photos or recording themselves pronouncing words in their mother tongue or other ways of contributing to Wikimedia that aren't writing encyclopedic articles. So this funnel needs to, first of all, uh, exposed to as many people as possible. They need to know there's a thing, it exists, here's the link, it is free, check it out. And that stage, we can invest as much or as little as we want in. It is proportional to the reach that we want to reach, right? We can use social media, we can have massive banner campaigns in the streets, depending on how much we, how many people we want to drive through it. Obviously, we will start with things like social media, etc., that are cheaper. But we drive people into the funnel. Stage two is where they basically take unsupervised, self-paced learning modules that will be high-quality audio-visual training materials. That thing that I said was missing, that in this pilot program, 
we are supplying. And once we have made this investment, once we have created these high quality audio visual materials, it is zero cost. They're there, they're on the platform, and any number of people can go through them. The idea being that uh, after we teach these core curricula, uh, including preparing for contributing, uh, for example, to the pseudonymity issue, uh, exposing people to the fact that there's more than one way to contribute, it doesn't have to be about writing articles, and then teaching neutral point of view and verifiability, the idea being that, again, a fraction of the people will come out the other end saying, yes, I like this, I enjoy this, and I want more, and here are my edits, and here is my username. And it is only that fraction that we look at from now on. Parenthetically, doesn't that mean we give up on a lot of people who could have become editors if we gave them more attention and personal uh, dialogue, etc.? Yes, yes, it does. It does mean that we are moving those people aside to focus on the numbers, to find those people who are, if you will, natural Wikipedians, people who naturally att uh, are attracted to this particular form of hobbyist contribution. The fact that you could also maybe convert some other people with no effort is correct, but this final approach is not spending that effort. This final approach is trying to surface in a zero cost way the people with whom it would make sense to invest uh, human attention, right? The people who have gone through that course and come out the other end and want more training, then can go to supervised training, right? Human led live training. They can be given resources in the form of grants. They can be invited to gatherings like such as this one. They can be given advanced mod uh, training on more advanced wiki topics, etc. And of course, they can be connected if they want. We won't force anyone, but they can be connected to Wikipedians in their vicinity. Having gone through the online program, they can also say, well, hi, I'm from Tanzania. Can you connect me to the group in Tanzania? And of course, the platform will be able to do that. All those people who have undergone the basic training and have continued and taken more advanced training and are still interested and are still excited, we will be able to offer them leadership programs, skill building beyond the wiki skills, human skill building, dialogue, uh, global governance, community organizing skills, event production, uh, committees and other governance roles, etc., etc. And through this approach, we hope to reach not just the 5,000 active editors in Africa, but also a more versatile skill base in Sub-Saharan Africa that, like I said, will give us future leaders from uh, the continent. Um, and we submit I mean, that the test would be whether this process can really generate a higher retention rate than the current movement average of about 2%. Right? That means we train 100 people and around two people actually continue and edit after the training. That may sound poor if you've never heard this number, but that is the more or less average retention rate in uh, outreach campaigns across the movement. Mm -hmm. So if we can do much better than 2%, we will have validated this approach. In order to validate it, we did this pilot period that we've just uh, ended, which was to uh, deliver this high quality structured training uh, to a particular cohort of editors and see the effect on that group of editors. We did this with live trainings because we didn't have yet the uh, recorded videos. So we figured we will record it as we deliver it live. We, we delivered live trainings on four modules. And the idea is that at the end of the, I mean, we just finished the training this week. And the idea is that now we will wait three months and measure the actual editing activity of people who underwent the training. And we will compare it to a baseline. In order to have a baseline to compare to, we actually recruited for the pilot existing editors, not complete newbies. Okay, so the, the eventual funnel will actually target complete newbies mostly. But we wanted to show the training was part of the missing piece. And in order to show that, we recruited from among our existing African communities, people who said they would be interested in receiving training on these core 
modules so that we have a baseline in the form of their editing activity so far that we're going to compare to their editing activity in the coming three months where we hope to show there will be more editing because of better motivation and more importantly better editing in the sense that the reversion rate of the edits that they make will be lower right so they will be encountering less friction due to not understanding the policies they will be encountering fewer reverts and deletes right that would be a real validation of the value of the training so we're just beginning the evaluation period i don't have the results of the evaluation yet to show to share with you but the idea is that if we are able to show that the training had a significant effect on the quality of editing we will have validated the the hypothesis that the training quality and the teaching quality was one of the missing pieces, and that will enable us to build the rest of the funnel. So the curriculum we have is these four modules. The first one is about preparing to participate on the Wikimedia projects. It doesn't even show a wiki page. It's all about attitude. It's all about the facts of what it means to collaborate in a peer production knowledge, free knowledge website like the fact that you are expected to communicate on wiki and the fact that other people you don't know will have criticism of your work and they will express it on your page again that's very upsetting and uh, surprising to some people but if they're prepared for it in advance before it happens before a person they never heard of shows up on their page and says i've deleted your work right if they're prepared for that and they know how to treat it and they know the importance of reading the small print of the warning that they got they are that much more likely to respond correctly. The second module is perhaps the most novel. It is called 101 Ways to Contribute to Wikimedia, and it focuses on all the other ways you can contribute beyond writing articles. Now, we all know, I hope everybody in the room knows that there's many ways to contribute to Wikimedia beyond writing articles, but we're often not talking about them. We're not showing them to newbies. And so this module literally walked newbies through not 101, but several dozen ways to contribute. And after describing each way, like proofread a page on Wikisource, we give, was giving them a link to a, ideally a video tutorial. And if we couldn't find a video tutorial, at least some help pages so that they can pursue that mode of contribution themselves. The, the third and fourth modules won't focus on article writing on Wikipedia, because that is what uh, most people do at least state that they want to do. But module two was where some of the cohorts of trainees would actually leave the program, not, con not even continue to take module three and four because they actually found something that excited them in module two. And they're off contributing to Wikidata or Wikisource or uh, recording audio or taking pictures. And that's as it should be. We, we, we propose that that is a correct and natural thing to do for some people to never even have to learn Wikipedia because they realize that other things are more appealing to them. And you know, the final two modules are about the core policies of mutual point of view and the verifiability that they need for contributing text on Wikipedia. We will notice that notability is not here. We were forced to make this pilot as uh, lean as it could be. And so we left out notability because notability you only need if you are creating new articles. Whereas if we are able to tell the learners, look, we have equipped you to improve existing articles, expand, improve existing articles, we write new neutral text, etc. We have not trained you on how to create new articles. That requires understanding the notability policy, which unfortunately we had to leave out of the pilot. There can be no doubt that that is a required necessary training module. If the pilot succeeds, we will definitely be adding a module on notability. So that's what we did. We had about 350 applicants registering to participate in the training, 350 people from Africa, some of them in this room. And of them, uh, from over 20 countries, of them we selected 150 applicants because we wanted to allow for attrition and still have around 100 people complete the course. Uh, we selected them for geographic diversity, uh, some editing experience, because again, we didn't want to spend time teaching people how to add a link, etc. not the technical stuff. We wanted to teach people the principles and the policies. 
And of course, we made sure that they speak English, despite the fact that the pilot was only in English and explained that it's only in English. A lot of people who don't speak English applied, uh, which to us only speaks to the size of the need. People really wanted this training, so much so that they applied for an English language training when they don't speak English. Um, so we had about 100 people attend each of the modules. There is going to be an exit survey. There is already an exit survey that we haven't, uh, people haven't completed it yet, so we don't have the results yet. But in addition to the um, survey, we already can share what we are seeing. So people were generally very happy with the training. They said, this is helpful, this is useful, um, this, uh, this uh, helped things click into place. Many people were learning about module two, the other ways of contributing. Many people said, this is the first time anyone told me about Wikisource. This is the first time I'm hearing about uh, recording pronunciations. Uh, I, I literally was unaware of these other ways of contributing. So that proved um, very uh, impactful. Uh, I also want to share a result that uh, um, to me is concerning. After module three, which teaches the neutral point of view, we gave a home assignment. We gave uh, four texts that were very non-neutral, that committed all kinds of sins discussed in the training. And the learners were asked to rewrite them, rewrite the passages into neutral point of view prose, according to what we've learned. Uh, this was a way of testing comprehension, right? Did you understand the principles that were taught? And despite the fact that people after the training itself said, great, we understand it now. People who have been editing for a long time said, only now I finally understand neutral point of view. Well, this really helped click things into place, etc." Uh, despite that, when I actually checked the homework that people submitted, the rewrites, only about a third, a little more than a third, only about 37% actually applied all the principles and produced neutral point of view that would be acceptable on Wikipedia. That's the bar I'm looking at, right? Would this, would this pass, would this fly on English Wikipedia if you were to paste this paragraph as it is? Only about 37% did, which may mean that we didn't teach it well, or it may mean that this practice of rewriting prose is uh, difficult, maybe foreign. I don't know enough about what is what is common as exercises in African education systems. Maybe people just aren't used to rewriting text. But the fact that even after cognitively understanding the principles, most people, more than the majority of the people, have problems actually applying it and producing a, a paragraph that would pass on English Wikipedia suggests to me that there is a deeper uh, difficulty and that maybe more time needs to be spent. Maybe we need like a whole course with a lot of exercises on neutral point of view. And of course, a little more than a third did get it and did really write fantastic neutral point of view uh, prose and did show understanding of the principles. But this result is still very much uh, to be interpreted. Um, and I don't know what I think about it to myself yet either. Uh, finally, um, we, uh, like I said, we heard from people that they, they um, finally understood something that they have heard many explanations for, which, despite the disappointing result I just mentioned, uh, does speak to at least the explanations that were offered, apparently being quite clear. People felt they understood, even if in some cases, they failed to later apply it. They felt that the penny dropped, uh, that they uh, now understand the concept. Um, so what, what happens next? Like I said, we the, the real test is in the, of the pudding is in the eating. We will see how uh, people edit in the coming three months. But assuming it uh, is proven effective, we're going to create a public version of these modules with short digestible video segments on Wikilearn, on the Wikilearn platform, so that everybody, not just the 150 people who participated, everybody can start consuming these trainings. That will be actually the beginning of the actual public funnel, right, where anyone can be directed there, and when we can start paying attention to who comes out the other end still interested. Um, 
we're going to uh, analyze the editing from these common humans, like I said, and see if we can prove our hypothesis that we will see more and better editing following these trainings. If it is indeed validated, we're going to scale this project up by creating more modules, for example, on notability, for example, on templates, on other things that people find hard to uh, grasp, but also to, to make it available in other languages. I have already received multiple requests to make this training available in French. We resisted the temptation to just offer interpretation into French because it doesn't work that way. French Wikipedia has slightly different norms, and we wouldn't want to misrepresent what goes on French Wikipedia when none of us, the people who are running the project, either speak French or know the, the intricacies of French Wikipedia policy. So by all means, we think the curriculum is good, so it could be translated and adapted to French by someone who is versed in the French Wikipedia. We would love to see that happen if and when we agree that it needs to be scaled up. And we will start stages of the funnel. If we are validating this, we will start driving as many people as we can into this funnel and start building the post-basic training investment. Now that we are going to produce graduates who did get the training and did the exercises and understand the policies, how do we now invest in them with the idea of being that the investment we have been doing up to now in whoever walked in the door is not going to be that much more effective because we will be directing that investment only at people who have completed this training and were not motivated extrinsically by the promise of, uh, I don't know, free data or a t-shirt. These are people who are actually there to learn. So uh, that is the plan, and that is the time we have. Do we have time for questions? I think we're just at time, considering the delay. Do we have time for questions? Is anyone sharing this? Should I just cede the stage for the next speaker? Maybe I should, because, uh, yeah, OK. Uh, I, am, I am happy to answer questions. I'm here uh, at the conference. Uh, feel free to ask. You can ask on the Telegram channel as well. Uh, the, the materials are not yet on Wikilearn because this was a live uh, training, two hours at a time. We need to edit the videos uh, uh, and not, like, remove the um, videos of the people asking questions for their privacy and you know, kind of turn it into a more digestible form. This will happen in the coming weeks. When it does happen, we will, of course, share the links and, uh, yeah, tell everyone. I would say about two months, probably, because some some people some people have some time off coming. So, uh, but about two months, we should have the materials available. Okay.